Bechoyro is daf tezayin. The Bryce says that if one designates a carbon, he's magdash a carbon, and then later it gets a mug, even if you shecht it outside at the base of Mikdash, although it has gush saguf, you're not over on chud echut. It's a tremendous chiddush. Because the only time you're over on shechting something outside the base of Mikdash is when it's available for the Mizbeach. It says in the Pasuk, if you could bring it to the oil Maya, then you're chayev on chud echut. But since this animal has a blemish, you can't shecht it anyways. And if you bring it outside the base of Mikdash, you shecht it, you're potter. Rav Huna learns that b'raisa, that you're chayev. But he learns it in a very specific case. The Dukin Shiva'ain, if the animal has cataracts, where, according to Rebek, if you bring an animal that has cataracts, it's a very weak mum. It's a mum, but it's a very weak mum that even by a bird, it's not considered a mum. So if you put it on the Mizbeach, when you weren't supposed to, you don't take it off. So you see that there is some sort of connection to the Mizbeach. And therefore, if you shech something like that, that has a mum, a cataract, a bedukin shubayin, then you are over on shkut echot, if you shech it outside of the Semigdash. Interesting that Rashi brings another pshat, usually he just says cataract, and over here, in our sugi, he brings another pshat. Bedukin shubayin, he says, are the eyelids. And he goes on to explain that the eyes actually a muscle to this world and how things work. The upper eyelid is the sky, the lower eyelid is the earth, the pupil is the sun, and how it goes around the orbit, the orbit of the sun, and the white of the eye is the ocean that surrounds the world. If a person was magdish, and later on there was a mum, and he made a tamura, meaning he said, I don't like the way my animal looks, I want to change it for another animal, it's possible that I said, do so, but both animals have a gedusha. Even if he did so, says the Gemara, after you redeemed it, the halacha is, according to Rav Nachman, the second animal, the tamura, must die. Because nothing can do. You can't be makrovit because it's only as good as the original. You made it instead of the original. The original has a mum, and you repite it, so it's near benitcha, it's already, it's, the original you can't do anything with, you can't check it, so this, the second one, the tamura, you can't check it as well. The original, you can redeem, but the second one you can't redeem, like we said yesterday, because it doesn't have enough kedusha. In order to redeem, you have to have something that's kaddish, and the second one doesn't have enough kedusha, so it dies. And the Gemara brings a bright that, that backs up Rav Nachman. And the Gemara brings that it says in the Pasuk, by non-kosher animals, that if they have, from those that chew their cud, they regurgitate their food, and they have split hooves. So the Gemara directions there are some animals that have both simonim. Although the Pasuk is talking about some animals like a camel, a pig that only have one of the two. But the Gemara Darshan there are some animals that have both simonim, and yet they're still not kosher. Like the end of the Pasuk says, Hame hulachem. What, are, what kind of animal has both simonim and is not kosher? Says the Gemara from the first part of the Pasuk, the red, Mimali Hagera, we learn our sugya, Sulei Mugdashim. An animal that you were that designated for a carbon and then it has a mum, Sulei Mugdashim, you can't bring it, it's fully kosher, it has a simonim, but Hame hulachem, you can't just take it with it. And the second part of the Pasuk, Uma Frisia Parasol, we learn the five chatois. There are five chatois that it must die, like the list. Although the five chatois, we actually learn out from Allah Hamishim Sinai, we don't need a Pasuk. So the Gemara, you do need a Pasuk. From the Allah Hamishim Sinai, we learn that it, you can't just let it graze and get a mum and then redeem it. They must die. And from the Pasuk, we learn out that's not just a regular Isr, but it's an Isr lav. You get Malchus on it. It says in the Pasuk, in the beginning of the Pasuk, it's a lav. Another pshat, why we need the five chatois in the Pasuk, although we already learned it out from Allah Moshe Messina, is to compare the red and the, and the green. The Sulei HaMikdashim to the five chatois. Just like the five chatois, they die and there's no way out of it. So two Sulei HaMikdashim, there's no way out of it, like Rav Nachman said, and they must die. Why don't we say the Pesulia Magdashim should be similar to a Bechar? A Bechar, firstborn, you can't do Tmura. If you say that it is Tmura, you can't be Makrovit. So what do you do? You wait until it gets a mum, and then you redeem it, you eat it. So why don't we do the same thing by Pesulia Magdashim? Says the Gemara, because a Bechar, the original, you also wait until it gets a mum, and then you could eat. But by Pesulia Magdashim, the original, you, you can't eat as is. 
you have to redeem it. So in Mela, the Tmura is just like the original. New Mishnah. It says in the Mishnah, the continuation of what we had previously, that anytime there's a partnership with a guy, there's no Chiv of Chayra. It says our Mishnah is a concept called Nichtei Tzoyim Barzil, or Tzoyim Barzil. Familiar with it when a woman comes in with Tzoyim Barzil. Tzoyim Barzil means ironclad investment. It's an a iron sheep, meaning there's the guy that owns sheep. He gives his sheep over to the Jew so that he should work the sheep. The Jew could pay him back even after 10 years. So the guy benefits that his inve- what he gave to the Jew, he's going to get paid no matter what happens to the sheep. Even if the sheep gets sick, ill, get lost, he's always going to get paid. So it's an iron investment. He also gets to share with the offspring of the sheep. The Jew has to give him some of the offspring. If that's the case, if that's the deal they made, then it's considered that the guy has a partnership in these sheep, and therefore there's no Bechayra. Why? Because since the guy could go at any time, if the Jew doesn't pay him, and he could take the offspring, so it's as if it's the guy, so he has a partnership. How many generations down? So is the Mishnah three generations down. Past three generations, it's already the Jews, because the guy could still grab the third generation. If the Jew added, even though he didn't have to add, and he told the guy, he says, look, you could take from the second generation, that means that the Jew actually added another generation to what is typically the minog, and therefore the guy takes all the way to the fourth generation. So the fourth generation, the great-grandchild, is potter minog. According to Rabbi Yehuda, the Jew doesn't have to add another generation. By itself, you get four generations. And according to Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, all generations, even ten generations, a hundred generations, the guy could always go and grab whatever he wants. He has a chorus. It's like a mashkoy. And therefore, there's never a bechayra when there's a son barzal. The question is, when the guy owns the sheep, and he gives the sheep over to the Jew, who really owns it? It seems like from our mission that the guy really owns it. He's considered a partner. Yet from Baba Metziah, it's mashma that the Jew owns it because in Baba Metziah, the mission says that a Jew should not do the same price with another Jew because he pays him back the money. In addition to the money, he also splits with the offspring. And that offspring is considered ribbis, it's considered interest. So in other words, if it was owned by the original guy, it wouldn't be ribbis. He's just getting back what he deserves. It's his. From the fact that the, the mission says that it's ribbis, you see that it's owned by the person that owes the money. So Abayi says, no, over there is talking about that he didn't take responsibility, and by us is talking about that he did take responsibility. Rava argues. He says the, says the same words, Nifsi Sam Barzal, and why doesn't the Mishnah say over there that there's a difference between a Jew and a Jew? If a Jew took responsibility, then he's a partner, there's no river. So Rava says the Pshad is always Nifsi Sam Barzal means that the it's an ironclad investment and there's no responsibility. The difference is that when it comes to Bukhaira, since the guy could take the sheep, then he's considered a part. Have a great Shabbos and a wonderful day.